Hi YouTube, AC Dodd here again. Uh, something a little bit different for you. Um, I haven't done uh, one of these videos for about a year, but uh, we're gonna do a little bit more on torches and uh, my little um, uh, fetish with uh, old and uh, reclaimed uh, classic torches. So uh, to this end, let's have a look at this old Ever Ready and see what I've done to it. So here we have a classic ever ready solar 5000 torch from the um, late 70s early 80s now these years ago just about everybody had one my dad had one every everybody i knew every, certainly every workman i knew had one of these in their toolbox so these were great in their day but uh, with a, a incandescent bulb and uh, the old um uh, six volt lantern battery inside uh, they certainly used to use a lot of battery and I remember my dad uh, saying to me um, you know uh, don't leave the torch on because uh, you know batteries cost money to replace etc etc so uh, battery technology then wasn't wasn't as it is now uh, and that, that was a zinc carbon battery that used to go in the back and it was great big square thing uh, that would fill up the inside of that torch and uh, you know it would last and the bulb would dim, etc., etc. Anyway, uh, this actual torch is one I bought from eBay. And uh, the reason why I got this one, it was actually the same same colour as my uh, father. Uh, so I thought, I'd, you know, a little bit of retro, uh, I'll get one and then perhaps do some modifications. Um, it's that time of year now where it's uh, the nights are drawn in and it's dark outside. So I thought I would get myself a classic torch and have a go at converting it to LED, as you can see in there, and also lithium ion power. Now we all know that lithium ion makes a, an excellent uh, power source for a torch. So, uh, um, you know, go out and buy some, not me. I uh, decided that I'd uh, investigate um, salvaging batteries. Uh, so I did that via eBay and I went out and uh, investigated purchasing um, used units so these are pretty much all the green ones here are uh, sony mirata and they're all out of dyson's so uh you know clearly uh, i've been through all these so these are all serviceable cells but the idea really was i knew a lot about um, lead acid technology obviously working with cars for many many years uh, and i also uh, knew a fair bit about uh, nicads and also uh, nickel metal hydrides but i didn't know anything about lithium ion so i thought i need to teach myself and then i find the best way to find out about batteries is to work with some old ones find their habits and then also work with some new ones and see what their habits are and then you can get a whole picture on how these batteries perform anyway to this end i decided to to use some of these in the torch so let's go in and see what i actually did so let's have a look in and see what I've done. Just take the back off and you can see uh, the back of the battery pack. Uh, and you can also see the very budget way that I've held that battery pack in. But actually that's just two kitchen sponge scarers. Um, you may laugh, but that actually works really well. Holds everything in, doesn't rattle. So uh, yeah very cheap very easy and fills up a space so the way I decided to power this um, is I made up a battery pack so that's custom made and that's in a uh, 5p configuration so it's just uh, the nominal 4.2 volts but uh, uh, each cell um, of these ones uh, were rated at 1300 or 1280 milliamp hour so they were quite small um, so actually what I did is I decided to use the worst ones out of all the batteries I salvaged and what I mean by worst ones is actually these were all at full capacity or nearly full capacity um, but the resist the internal resistance was was up at sort of 50 milliohms so for an INR cell that's uh, not ideal for higher current applications but um, when using them in this torch with only a one watt bulb it's not a problem so I made up a battery pack, which you can see spot welded, nickel strip down both sides, 
and then it uses an off-the-shelf battery protection circuit which basically cuts the battery pack out at 2.5 volts and, and cuts it off as well to prevent overcharging. Uh, all I've done there is just take the wires out, uh, just uh, take them up in, in captain tape and uh, yeah, works really well. Uh, five cells is more than enough uh, in terms of uh, capacity. So I built this back in April, it's now November. I haven't actually charged it yet and I've used the hell out of this and we're still at 3.9 volts. So massive capacity there. This torch just runs and runs and runs. So coming around to the business end, let's have a look what I did here. And I just used a, uh, and I just used a uh, off the shelf LED conversion from the torch site. And uh, all that is, is a conventional uh, LED conversion bulb. This is one watt, 120 lumen and uh, is uh, rated from one to nine volts. So it's a very wide voltage range. But what that does mean is it's constant brightness. So as the battery, as the battery runs down and the voltage drops, this actually stays a constant brightness, which is absolutely ideal. Anyway, that fits in there. Like so. And then inside the torch, those are the wires uh, from the uh, battery pack. I just bought them around, soldered them onto the original terminals and uh, which utilizes the uh, switch, which is on top, which is there. So it works as per normal. Put that on, hit the switch and she runs beautifully. So just looking at that, you will also notice there is no charging port. So originally I was going to put a charging port in the back, but actually after using it and I realized I didn't need to charge it that often, I decided that there was actually no need for a charge uh, for a charging port. So uh, when I do eventually need to charge this, all I'll do is simply uh, connect a power supply uh, across the, the pack and just simply set it at four volts and only charge it to four volts only. Uh, that way the batteries will last uh, even though their second hand will last forever because they, they won't ever fully charge. But the capacity in the batteries uh, is more than enough for what I need. So in terms of light output, yeah, it's not a massively bright torch, but it's a white torch and it's I found this ideal for working uh, in the house. So if you need to work under a cupboard somewhere, <coughs> you can stand the torch upright on its side. Uh, it's got the traditional... Uh, spread beam with a, a small hot spot in the middle so there is some uh, throw to the beam um, but it's just a nice crisp light and uh, long lasting so you know I, I've had this on for an hour uh, hour and a half already um, and still on the same charge uh, while working in cupboards for example and I found it not to be too bright and just a perfect amount of light to work with so yeah in terms of a conversion uh, this makes old torches um, very much usable and also rechargeable. So there's no need to throw that away. You just need to upgrade it with a bulb, put some batteries in and away you go. Um, again, yeah, I could make it easier with a charging port, but actually in reality, uh, it lasts so long that I just don't need to. If I did this conversion again, uh, maybe I would uh, look at using... Uh, less batteries so maybe three batteries uh, instead of the five uh, because you just don't need the capacity but even with three batteries and if you use 2000 milliamp hour uh, or two and a half thousand milliamp hour that's available now or even 3000 milliamp hour uh, you would get the same or if if not longer life so um, you know really modern technology makes these old torches very much usable once again. Well, I hope you found that useful and interesting. Um, it's not car related, but uh, it is something that uh, I quite enjoy doing uh, in between car jobs, uh, playing around with uh, torches and uh, lithium ion batteries, etc. Um, I just like to keep my mind up to date with what's going on um, so I don't get stagnated in one area like vehicles, for example. Uh, anyway. As ever, please like and subscribe.
and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.